Drawing with the pen tool can be very tricky if you have never used it before. And this particular challenge of adding a reflection to sunglasses is a really good example of using a nest and the advantages of having it. I'm hoping this will help those who are asking the question, why do I need a nest? Can't I just create a mask and be done? What's the point of the extra work? This is an example of where it will definitely benefit you. So down here on video track one, we have this guy playing poker. He's got sunglasses on and there's his opponent sitting across from him. That's gonna be this guy on video track two. The director is saying that they want to see these poker chips reflecting in this guy's sunglasses. We're just going to take this clip, put a mask around this and put it inside of his sunglasses. Well, if we do that, and I'm gonna do this just real fast and sloppy so you can get the idea of the wrong way to do this. So if I go up here to the effects control panel, we can shrink this down a bit and kind of eyeball where we want those to be. I'm going to turn my opacity down a bit so I can see through to his lenses. We'll zoom in to get up real close. And we're right here at the first frame so let's say we want to start like that. And if I go over here to the pen tool and let's just imagine that I do this real pretty, even though I'm not right now. And there we have a mask around the first frame of his sunglasses. And then as we play the clip, well, we're going to need to follow our guy's sunglasses. So that means we need to animate this mask. Okay, no problem. So I can put a keyframe here for the very first frame. And then if I select the mask, I can move it over here. But notice as I move the mask, the video of the poker chips isn't moving. I move forward, I slide the mask over and just imagine I'm getting this spot on just trying to demonstrate the problem of losing the poker chips. So this is where the problem of not creating a nest comes up. If I wanted to keep those chips inside the mask, well, I'd have to go over here and click on anchor point and then sit here and, oh, that's not gonna work either. Notice it's gonna move the mask Okay, so I'll undo that. What about position? How's that gonna help us? Same thing, it's moving the mask. You can see, I'll turn the opacity back up. If we try to animate this, it's not gonna work. So this is why you're going to want to create a nest and put this clip here of our opponent inside of a nest, and that will solve the problem that you're seeing right there. Okay, so we're gonna start over from scratch and we'll do this the right way. So we're back to, we have our clip on the bottom, video track one of our poker player with the sunglasses. And then on video track two, we have our opponent who has the chips in his hands and we're going to put this clip into a nest. A nest is just a sequence. So if you look over here in our project panel, we have this main sequence, that's this guy here. If I right click on this clip and go to nest, as soon as I create that nest, you'll see it show up right here in the project panel. And it's got the exact same icon as our main sequence. If I double click on that, that's our clip of our opponent with the chips. So there he is inside the nest. We go back to our main sequence and what we want to do is put a mask on the reflection nest and we want to have that follow this guy's sunglasses. So I'm going to select the reflection nest, go to shift five to open up our effects control panels. And just to do a quick demonstration, if I were to click here, this is going to create an ellipse mask and I can just drag this around and you can see what's going on. I'm going to turn the opacity back up. So wherever I move this, I'm seeing that portion of the opponent clip. There's his poker chips. So 
just to give you a quick idea of how this is gonna work, I wanna see those inside that lens. I don't want to touch the position and the scale of the reflection nest. I'm gonna to need to move this by going over to the reflection nest, selecting the clip, and here is where I do my scaling and move things around. So this is gonna end up going up here where his glasses are. Now if I go back to the main, you couldn't see the poker chips because the mask was way down here and the clip's been moved. So now you get the idea of how this is gonna work. Let me delete that mask and let's turn down the opacity of the reflection nest so that we can see our guy's sunglasses frames. We're gonna zoom way in so we can get a nice tight, and we can turn the opacity all the way down of this reflection nest. We don't need to see it at all, but it does need to be selected and you do need to be at the first frame. Make that a little bit bigger. And so instead of using this ellipse tool, which is not gonna be the shape of his glasses frame, we're gonna use the free draw bezier tool which I don't think anybody calls it that, but we call it the pen tool. As soon as I click on that, we have this mask created, but nothing's gonna happen until we start to click over here in the program monitor. What I like to do is find a straight area of whatever I'm going to draw a mask around and start kind of in the middle with just a single click, and then I let go. That puts one point there. But the second click, which is gonna be on this curve, I'm gonna click and hold the mouse. So you click, hold, and drag. And when you do that, you get this, you get the handles and you can drag this curve however you want it. You can come back and adjust this later. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And we do this next one, kind of curve that. So I'm just clicking, holding, and dragging a little bit. And then this last one, I just click one single click and that closes the mask. Now that I've closed the mask, I can go back and adjust these points. So I can click on here and we can kind of play with exactly where things are landing. You can grab one of these handles and pull on it. If you happen to want to convert, let's say for example, you didn't want this handle here. If you hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, you'll get that caret symbol. If I click while I'm holding down the Option or Alt key, it'll convert that and you'll have no handles. If you hold the Option key again or the Alt key on the PC and click, you get your handles back. So you can completely adjust the shape of the mask after it's finished. When you create a mask in Premiere, it's going to default to having a feather of 10. You can either adjust that here to more or less. You also have this little handle here, which also adjusts it to whatever you like. And right now it's hard to see that it's doing anything. Let me back up a little bit. And if I remember, I turned the opacity of the reflection nest all the way down. So I have to turn that back up. Now, if I pull on this handle, we're feathering in the image of the opponent's hands here a lot more gradually as opposed to if I completely remove the feather it's got this hard edge. So for this shot I'm going to leave it at five and you can always go back and adjust that later if it's not quite looking right. Also over here in the mask control area you've got this expansion. It also contracts the mask if I make it larger. It's just expanding the size of the mask, but you can also go the opposite direction and shrink it down. I'm just going to reset that to zero. And you also can invert it. So here we're just inverting what is being seen and what is not. So you also have these controls right here for tracking a mask. I have not had very good luck with this in Premiere. It works much better in After Effects. So we're going to do this the manual way where we move forward a few frames and we set keyframes for the mask path. First thing I wanna do is click on the mask path to put a keyframe at the very first frame of our clip. 
and then I'm going to click in this gray area here. That will allow me to tap the right arrow key 10 times. And the amount that you move forward is gonna depend on what you're tracking. The faster it's moving, the more keyframes you'll need. In this particular example, 10 frames seems about right. And now if I click on the mask, you can see that it no longer is in the right spot. I can click with this grabber hand and put it where I need it. I can hover near the edge and I'll get this rotate tool. So I'm gonna zoom back in a little bit tighter. And so you just follow, I'm gonna click here in the gray again, move forward 10 frames, and then I'll select the mask path. And you'll see right here, there's no keyframe, but as soon as I click and drag this and let go, it's automatically creating a keyframe for the path of this mask. Once you have your mask following the frames of the sunglasses, now we can animate what we're gonna see inside there. Right now we start off seeing a little bit of the chips and then we're just looking at nothing pretty much. So remember, you do not want to animate the position and scale of the nest while you're in your main sequence. We're gonna to go to our reflection nest and we're gonna select the clip that we're seeing inside of the frames and we'll animate here in this position and scale. In order to see where the frames are, we're gonna paste a reference clip right here of our guy with the sunglasses. So I go back to our main sequence, select our clip of the guy with the sunglasses, copy that, and then right here on track two, I'll make sure I'm at the first frame, paste, and now I can see the motion of where his frames are. I'm just gonna turn down, we'll call this our reference clip, so I can see where the frames are. Now I can select our poker chips and see where they're gonna fall and uh, let's say I want to shrink that down to about that size. And I can just select motion. Remember, you don't want to show the edge of your clip in the frame. So we have to be over far enough that we're gonna be clear of the edge of his frames. I'm going to place a keyframe for position. That's the keyframe for this bottom clip. Then I'm gonna go to near the end and select motion, move these chips back up here, and then I'll just drag through and kind of see if they're staying in the frame. And that looks pretty good. I'll turn off my reference clip, go back to the main sequence, and now we're getting a lot closer to what we want. And if you turn down the reflection nest a little bit, Turn down the opacity, maybe about 30% or so. Also, you might want to change your blend mode, possibly put it on screen. So another advantage of setting up a nest like this is if we change our mind and don't want to show the poker chips, but instead we want to show the man's face, we can leave this nest. All of our work here is safe. We don't have to change anything. We can go to this reflection nest and I'll just move this clip out of the way in case I want to add it back in later. And I'm going to mark this clip in and out and we'll go to our clip of our opponent and let's say we want to show his face. So I can mark an end point and add that clip down here to the bottom track. And now all I have to do is repeat the same process. I'm going to select our bottom track, shift five, go to the effects control panel, and to make this guy's face show up in there, we're gonna scale him down a little bit, move him over, and you get the idea. We're just repeating the same process. Now I'm gonna turn off my reference clip, and real quickly, we're, we're swapping out our shot without having to redo a whole lot. We want to put another copy of the opponent in the other lens, so I'm gonna move this clip 
of my actor with the sunglasses up a video track and then option click and drag on a Mac or alt click and drag on a PC, drag a copy of this opponent clip up to video track two. So now I have two identical clips and then this clip is just my reference so I can see where the sunglasses are. So this second clip, this is the one that I'm gonna put into the other lens. So to be able to see this new copy, I need to create a mask for this other lens. So again, I'm gonna turn my scaling up and we'll put this second lens right in the middle. I'm selecting the reflection nest and if you go over here, you can see there's mask one. I'm gonna get my pen tool again. Now, if, if this happens to you and you don't want to have that in your way, what you can do is go back to your reflection nest and turn off that clip because you don't need to see it. So because I flipped over to this other sequence, I've lost my pen tool. I click on it again, I get a third mask. Easiest thing to do, just delete that, delete that, start over again. Remember our first mask is fine. So I'm gonna get the pen tool. Now I've got this mask ready to be drawn. I don't have that other video getting in my way. I'm gonna select the clip and then if I hold shift five, that'll open up your effects control panel. Now. This one already has some position automation on it from the original lens. So what you wanna to do to move your second reflection over is to not touch the position keyframe. You wanna move the anchor point. Now I can slide this second reflection around, but notice as I play forward, they are both moving in tandem. So it's keeping the original keyframing of the original reflection. Now I'm going to turn my reference video back on because I need to move my anchor point so that my new reflection is in the other lens and doesn't show any of the edge of the video like it was before in the original. Then I'm going to add my third mask and this one is going to keep this opponent video copy from overlapping on our original opponent clip. And if it crosses over like that, then you just need to animate it a little bit. So I put a keyframe. And then we'll just move that mask over and keep it safe. Because most sunglasses are curved, you might want to add a warp to the image. So you could try lens distortion. Go to the effects panel, which is shift seven shortcut, and then go to video effects and the distort folder. Drag and drop this onto your clip on video track two, and then shortcut shift five to open the effects control panel. Turn up the curvature and play with the other controls to get the distortion you like. You're going to see your video curve, but then you get this white border. You might need to play with the scale and the anchor point of your clip if you start to see the border. I would leave it on while you're getting the look you want and then you can click here on the fill color and switch it to black just to be safe. But if you leave it to white, it'll make it easier to see that you've hidden that. Remember, you keyframed your position so I wouldn't go messing with that as you might end up creating a problem you don't want. Once you get one lens the way you like it, you can select the clip, copy, and then paste attributes onto the other clip. Thanks for hanging out to the end of this episode of Video Deconstructed. I'm Nick Sanders, and if you could hit the subscribe button, I will reflect more videos upon you. Click and be happy.